All right, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode here on the Lure Lab. This is episode number 77, and as always, I am your host, the captain, Andrew Full, and as always, we are a part of the Serious Angler Network, and we got a pretty quick episode for you here today. Um, the one thing I'm going to mention first is that you'll see that it is a relatively shorter episode, but we are diving into some new baits that I just got in recently that I'm really excited to try out for the 2024 season, and we're going to talk about a couple different colors in each of these baits, and... Um, do I think they're going to replace other baits in my arsenal, where I'm going to use them, how I'm going to rig them, etc. cetera. And uh, we're going to start off hot and fresh here with a little tip for everyone who, who is tuning in. If you're on YouTube, you'll see me hold up the box that I'm about to hold up. But it's a terminal tackle tip on how to store hooks and et cetera to keep them nice and sharp instead of taking them out of the packages. But first, before we get into that, make sure you scroll down into the description if you're either on mp3 your favorite podcast platform or youtube and you'll notice everything that we talked about in this episode is listed down below and if you go over to omnia and click on one of those links and type in serious 10 at checkout you'll save yourself 10 percent. there's a lot of great perks with omnia like free shipping over i believe it is 50 dollars there's a quick two-day shipping option, which I believe is $6. And you always get the baits fast and efficient. Um, there's no long wait times. You usually have most of the product in stock that you're looking for and that we talk about on these episodes, which is an added bonus. And if it's not in stock, you can type in your email and they will notify you when these baits in Terminal Tackle and whatever we talk about comes into stock. Now, they are some awesome benefits of being an Omnia member using their Premium Pro. Like you can get water temp maps. You can uh, <clears throat> you can re earn rewards back on everything that you purchase. So that's something that you may want to look in if you do shop at Omnia and you're not already a Premium Pro member. That's something I highly recommend that you do because there's a bunch of little hidden perks, a bunch of emails that will come out hinting at member-only sales, etc. So make sure you hop on that train. So let's dive into it here. Uh, the, the terminal tackle box I used is the Plano Edge 3700 deep. And I do this because I like to keep all of my hooks in their packages. So when I open up this big box here, you'll see that everything is organized by size, brand of hook, etc. So like, for instance, our drop shot hooks, I have them in the front middle all the way down and i have them organized by size so like ichikawa ct5s i have twos i got threes i even have fours in here because i like multiple different size drop shot hooks depending on what bait that i'm using and it's almost always a size two size four but the smallest going up to a size two so if you don't organize your tackle this way already in a deep plano box i recommend you do it um no more guessing uh, what size hooks you're pulling out of the book, the box that you're storing them in because they're in the packages. They're staying sharp. They're rust protected through this box with the water wick technology. And this is just a great purchase to have. So from left, well, right to left. So these are all like my flipping hooks, EWGs. Center is going to be like drop shot hooks up here in the top. is going to be like uh, neco weights, et cetera, any additional accessories that I need. These are Great Lake Finesse underspins, ball heads, ball heads, and then bottom here are Okashira and Nishini jig heads. So it's just a quick, easy way to store your terminal tackle like hooks, some jig heads, so you have no second guessing on what sizes you're pulling out of the box. So let's talk about the baits, right? And the first one that I got this year, because I wanted to find something that's a little bit more durable to a Hasdong Shad and still has great fish catching colors. This one was created by one of the Johnston brothers through Sixth Sense, and it is going to be the Party Minnow, the Sixth Sense Party Minnow. It's three inches long. Um, and I'm going to go into the good and the bad and my thoughts on these. I think they're going to catch a lot of fish. But the first thing I noticed, and you, this happens a lot with a lot of soft plastics, is you'll get inconsistencies from the colors. And I don't even know if this will show up very well on the camera. But you'll notice if you look at each one of these baits, let me see if I can close up the clamshell here. 
the first impression I got what this is a green pumpkin shad color. If you hold up each one of these baits and you can see it better in person, each one of them has a different shimmer to them, a little bit more flake than the other, a little bit more translucent or more dark. So there's some inconsistent pouring, but you're going to get that with a lot of soft plastic baits. How am I going to fish the party minnow? I picked up two colors to start, Gill Juice, because I love a chartreuse green pumpkin bait, especially when it's really, really sunny and smallmouth fishing. And then a green pumpkin shad works great when it's sunny and cloudy. But how am I going to rig this? I'm probably mostly going to nose hook this and do the drop swim technique, which is just a modification on drop shot fishing. You're going to cast it out with a long cylinder style drop shot weight, rig it 24 to 40 inches above your weight with the hook of choice. And for these, it's probably going to be an Ichikawa CT5 or a 3 because the nose is relatively small on this bait. The first thing that I did notice, though, is that it is quite more durable. And here is the CT5 five in size four they have like that nano coat super smooth super sharp now the only knack that i do have on these hooks is the fact that if you use forceps or pliers on them because of the super slick coating this goes for all nano coated hooks they do become brittle the more you touch them with other metals like players so they will break on you so be extra cognizant of what is happening with your hook because the last thing you want to do is set the hook on a fish and have it break as in your hook not your line but the party minnow the first thing i really like about this bait is the tail action seems to be very very good very soft very limp it moves a lot you have these beautiful ribs in the body which is going to help possibly make a bubble trail in the water and i'm sure that's why they designed it that way there's no slit on the body but there is a slight slit on the top and i'm assuming there is okay so there is a center line it might be hard to see here there's a center line on the body so if you wanted to through rig it with like a tech expose hook and have that hook exposed you could you probably want to go with like a size one or two even owner cover shot or whatever your favorite straight shank hook is but nose hooking this on a drop swim technique, I think, is going to be the money for this. And it's proven to catch big smallmouth already with one of the Johnson's brothers up at the St. Lawrence River. I believe it was Corey Johnson, but don't quote me on that. Sometimes I'm terrible with remembering who designed baits and et cetera. But yeah, two colors I really like is this green pumpkin shad. Besides the inconsistencies in pouring the color, and I'm sure it's probably... Uh, difficult process and then you have the green the gill shad which is like your green pumpkin shad and this one has a little bit more poly flake in it if you can see it we got green and gold and some coppers and on a sunny day this color is going to work really well a lot of people say flake doesn't matter i actually think flake does matter when it comes to sunny conditions because the bait just looks a little bit different than what everyone else will be throwing so overall i'm a fan of the six cents um party minnow three inches long i'll be excited to see how it holds up against the has dong and we'll be putting reels up on that in the future talking about the differences and which one i like better so, but for overall, I would say this is going to be a buy for those smallmouth fishermen up here in the north, maybe even in the Tennessee River area, maybe even on some spotted bass fisheries down south or out west. Like these, I have a feeling will get bit. Bonus rigging, you could probably throw them on like an Okashira head or X Zone Lures has a propeller jig head or even a small jig head for an ultra finesse rigging. And these will probably get you a lot of bites. All right. The next bait, I just got these ones in, and we're going away from the soft plastics and into a hard bait. And it's going to be the Excite Baits Villain, which is a top water. It's three inches long, so we're on a three-inch bait kick. I guess all these baits we're talking about today are three inches. It comes with number four Mustad hooks. These are not nano-coated, I do not believe. They just look like extra-wide gaps or triple grips as KVD basically made famous back in the Tennessee River ledge days when he was just crushing the competition. But the first thing I noticed pulling the Excitebaits villain, 
out of the packages how great the paint job is this color is matt gill which i'm a huge fan of like just contrast poppers black and white and the other one i have is sunrise shad which is more of your shad color but i'm really excited about this gill pattern because just very faint dulled out yellows blues and purples has a little bit of a yellow chartreuse tail so when this bait is sitting at rest in the water treble hook down black treble hook feathered treble on the back there love that so when this bait is at rest in the water the fish is going to be able to see that chartreuse yellowy tail i'm assuming will illuminate really well in the water because that's about the only spot on the bait that's slightly glossy and that's gonna trigger some bites but the first impression of this thing is it is extremely loud and i hope you can hear that which means that it's going to create a ton of commotion on the surface it's going to have a lot of drawing powder powder a, a ton of drawing power to bring those fish long distances over to it now on the back of the excite baits villain it says you can chug it with one deep pull of the rod tip or walk it with slack in your line and with small twitches so they're claiming excite baits is claiming that this bait will also will chug and also walk in place which is really hard to find with a popper so i'm excited to put it to the test i have chugging poppers and i have walking poppers and they have a time and place but if you have a bait that can do both that could one save you some money in the long run of buying these baits but also you can limit how much you put in your tackle box so like i have some great walking poppers and i have some great chugging ones some of the best chugging poppers are in 20 dollars range which would be like the labino rio rico which is one of the best poppers ever made became famous because of rick clun way back in the day so i'm excited to see what the excite baits villain is going to do and how it reacts on mono because i like fishing poppers on mono or even rigging it with like a 30 pound braid to a heavy mono bumper with a rapala knot like a 20 pound or 15 to 20 pound mono bumper and see how that bait reacts to the mono bumper making it walk in place so this is one i'm really excited about i absolutely love popper fishing poppers catch a lot of really big fish especially coming right out of the spawn and there's a lot of places down in the south right now that are starting to come through that spawn into a shad spawn and a popper is something that you're gonna want in your box to get a lot of bites and to put a lot of bass in the boat so don't sleep on the excite baits villain popper i think this is going to be one that catches a lot of fish for a lot of people across the country this year all right third bait this one's really exciting for me it's probably the most it's on the more expensive side of a soft plastic you only get eight in the bag um i've been looking for a bait to replace the berkeley max and critter hog since it's discontinued and i'm starting to get low and i absolutely fell in love with the free rigging technique last year and we just had a really really awesome episode with Sa sakai usho one of the most winning co-anglers of all time fishing the open level tours on the fld flw mlf bpt so on the bpt side the toyota series and then um also in the bass opens the guy has won a lot of money throwing the free rig so i'm excited to talk about a bait that has been brought to the united states through spro distribution and that is going to be the nori's bait escape chibi twin and this is a three incher they come in a couple different sizes and i bought this one here just to see how it would look on a free rig and this color is green pumpkin reaction which is going to be your green pumpkin chartreuse it's a very small bait but the first thing i notice is the attention to detail every bait in the package is the same there's no crazy differentiation in uh colors as some baits you'll have like especially like this green pumpkin sometimes you'll get the green pumpkin all the way through the body or the chartreuse all the way through the body I really like these little arms here tons of little movement they have an extremely fishy smell it's a scent and flavor formula so i don't exactly know what it is but from the little bottles it's probably some type of shrimp flavoring this guy i think you could probably fish on like a little football head 
like a finesse football head quarter ounce, maybe up to a three eighths, depending on what football head you buy. You want to be cognizant of the wire keeper or hook keeper that's on the bait. I don't think you want one with a wide lead collar. You are probably going to want to look for like a tungsten one with a single wire arm coming off to thread this on. So you don't bulge out the head of the bait too much or even free rigging it on like a size one or one uh, um, EWG style or worm hook. And I think that's where I'm going to fish this guy the most is on the EWG with a free rig and slowly hopping it. It says it is a weighted material. So just holding it, it is actually relatively dense and heavy compared to a lot of other soft plastics that I have held. But I think this one is going to be a really good fish catcher. You could even power shot it and go with like a size one or two owner cover shot and throw it out there and see if you can catch a lot of fish on it but this color i think i'm most excited about and i didn't open the pack yet is the light green pumpkin in blue flake these baits just have a lot of detail to them they're 11 dollars a pack for eight for them so they're a little bit more pricey but what i find with jdm baits is if you hit on a jdm bait that catches fish it usually performs or outperforms other baits in its class for fish catches and size so don't be afraid to click the link down below go over to omnia pick you up some nori's baits especially this escape chibi twin i think this one's going to put a lot of big bass in the boat and be kept uh kind of under the wraps for a while with a lot of touring and recreational anglers so those are three baits for 2024 that i am excited to try out this year and hopefully put a lot of big bass in the boat so if you're looking to book a guide trip with me, I'm a full-time guide out of Lake Erie in the Finger Lakes here in New York State. If you're looking to book a guide trip, head on over to my social media or even message me on the Lure Lab social media on Instagram. My personal page is Full Fish and Guide Service. If you're looking to book a trip, we're filling up days now for July, August, September, and October, and they are limited at this point. My spring is fully booked. I do have some days open this week, so as you're listening on this Saturday, it would be April 9th, the day after the eclipse, through the 12th, and then after that, we're basically booked solid all the way until about the middle of July. So stay tuned for a lot of big smallmouth catches. We greatly appreciate everyone who tunes in. If you're new on YouTube, tuning in for the first time, hit that subscribe button. We put out a ton of juice. We have a lot of interviews. People come on and listen to this podcast and just dive in and talk about the best ways to modify baits and to put a lot more bass in the boat, or kayak, on shore, whatever your flavor is. Leave a comment down below if you want to try out any of these baits or if you've used them and how you fish them. I love to hear those comments. And then if you're on MP3, your favorite podcast platform, please leave us a review. That helps the Lure Lab be seen by more people. So more people tune in. Therefore, we have a bigger audience if we have more reasons to get higher profile guests on. So we appreciate everyone who tunes in on a weekly basis, and we will catch you next Saturday here in the lab.